this is Joe Van Cleve, and we're in the studio of Ethan Moses. This is the headquarters of Camera Dactyl, right? Yeah. Hey, Ethan, welcome to the channel. I'm really <laughs> glad to be here. An Albuquerque-based camera manufacturer. Yeah, that makes two of us. <laughs> yeah. yeah, homemade cameras, but you're doing it a little more professionally than I am, obviously. Medium more professional. Medium more. Yeah. <laughs> well, give us a tour of the place. Sure, okay. Um, so welcome to my dream shop. I wish I had 5,000 square feet, but um, as it is, it's, it's pretty good. Um, this is like my programming table. I just got this new box uh, to mess with SolidWorks on. This ostensibly is my soldering uh, station. Right now it has a lot of old broken cameras and a computer that I poured a cup of coffee into. Um, wanted to see what happens. And Don't recommend you know. it. Yeah, <laughs> but in here I have all sorts of, uh, you know, hand electronics, oh, nice. tools, and that sort of thing. Nice. And I sort of all of my presents from Chinese Hanukkah, from, you know, microcontrollers. Chinese Hanukkah? Oh, yeah, it's, it's when you order, like, a lot of things on AliExpress, and then every day you get a different microcontroller, or LED, or sensor, or box of capacitors, or whatever. Um, yeah, so these are just sort of electronics components for work, relays, and power supplies, and I've got this Stearman oh, Press yes. uh, 445, which I still need to make a video of my own on. I owe Tim uh, one of these, but th this is great. I've, I've developed a bunch of things in it. Um, it's pretty reliable, and, huh? Yeah, super yeah. reliable, super easy, yeah. really small. Yeah. I really want to make this into my direct positive kit mm -hmm. thing for 4x5s, um, and I'd like to do some color in it, and so... Mm. Uh, maybe one day Tim will feel better about me dragging my feet, uh, but yeah, I, I like this product. Here's a fun old project. Uh, well, it's it's pieces of one camera. This is a digital Nimslow that runs with four Raspberry Pi. A 3D camera. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I got to the point where the hardware would work all uh, glued to this board with these USB literally hubs and such. Yeah, yeah, literally breadboards everywhere. And then, so this is me trying to solder it all together. Oh, wonderful. And I've Look had. That. Uh, Isn't that wonderful? Well, it's less wonderful than I had hoped. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> but, you know, this was a project that um, I would like to get back to one day, but I know I could spend six months programming and learning, like, uh, to make. I, I have never made, like, a GUI for a user. And so making a GUI for this camera is like one of the surprisingly most challenging parts for me. Um, although maybe a GUI designer would laugh at me and think that, you know, the photography related parts are the hard part. Anyway, um, there's battery issues. There are all sorts of issues with this project, but it's, it's a project that I really uh, am curious about and love. Uh, yeah, so this was the first 3D printed camera that I made. Um, this one's kind of a broken prototype or has has some old pieces and some new pieces but this it, is a four by five format yep yep it's a four by five it's kind of modeled on a deer dwarf um yeah i made like a little kickstarter it's a deer dwarf <laughs> yeah yeah exactly although they made four by fives that's beautiful um, yeah, that's it's like a toys r us camera yeah yeah fisher price i made them in all sorts of different color combos and Eight. um I don't usually make them anymore because they're so time intensive and expensive to produce. Uh, I think if I sold them for, let's say, the $600 that it would take for me to make minimum wage, yeah. you'd be better off buying a Bush Pressman D. <laughs> really nice camera. But I, this was a fun camera and I yeah. met a lot of people. A lot of people really enjoyed it for 200 bucks. This is usually where I do my most of my assembly work. Mm -hmm. um, I have out some Mamiya Press bits and pieces. Um, nice focusing screen so that I can calibrate every camera that I put out. This is all uh, prototypes of things. There's like an early hand camera. Bags and bags and bags of prototypes of things that I've brought to market like this or just uh, prototypes of different types of mechanisms. This was like a film winding mechanism clutch thing. Um, just like a piece of an idea of a camera. Um, and then there are some products that I made like this was some sort of trick shot uh, mirror assembly prototype for something I eventually shipped to a friend that mm. we decided was an intensely stupid product, but it was nice to make him one. Um, these are just early prototypes of camera grips that I make. Oh. Um, this one is the first uh, Nickermat FT grip that worked. This one is the first uh, Yashica Electro 35G series. This is 
where I develop pictures, <laughs> nice. do some experiments. Um, and this is probably the most fascinating side to most people. It's the thing that they don't have at home, but maybe you do. Um, racks of 3D printers. Um, I've got a bunch of different types. Some of them are down right now. I need to make the nose cone files to uh, get some things on there, but I'm printing another homunculus body down here and um, a camera for you mm -hmm. <laughs> on three of these printers. So Ethan, what are you doing here? Um, I'm making you a camera. <laughs> I mean, it'll be done in like 20 hours with no uh, no errors. So I can sleep on the couch and we'll have pizza? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you can. <laughs> I got some things I got to do. But yeah, yeah, if you want to uh, vacuum the floor and then... No, I'm, I'm going to put you to work making other cameras. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I'm preheating the PLA. Let me see if I've got these files on here. Like baffle starting to print. So Ethan, you're camera dactyl cameras and you're selling online these 3d printed manufactured photography products right yep okay so i got a lot of things in the catalog um you know i started making that uh, fold-up camera uh, i guess the next product i made um was this camera this is a handheld 4x5 camera and i make them um with different nose cones to fit different lenses. Actually, that's what I have to do later today and tomorrow and probably the next day to fill some orders that came in. But um, yeah, so it has a focusing helix. I like to use this thing as like a focusing tab and then you can lock it down so that it, uh, it, won't, um, it won't turn. So you can lock it at infinity or some hyperfocal distance or uh, portrait distance, whatever. And sometimes I use this with an accessory range finder and I've just written you know, on the back mm -hmm. here, um, distances that I've measured on the ground glass. And the peep sight viewfinder. Yep, yep. And so these um, these you can change off. Uh, it's just got three hot or cold peep shoes, side. rather. Um, and I make these at different angles, although extreme wide angle is hard without a piece of glass. Mm. I make them still for really wide angle cameras, but you have to kind of like move your head around yeah. to see. And then it holds a 4x5 uh, yep. film holder. Yep, standard 4x5. And then you have a ground holder. glass or on the back, yeah. Yeah, so it's nice. um, actually acrylic. That's, acrylic, a, yeah, I nice. think, a big accidental benefit of using the laser cutters. I can make these grids and yeah. also just making it out of acrylic. It can scratch a little bit easier, but like you can really bang on it. And uh, so I designed it originally with glass in mind, and I put a groove on the back so that you can take a film holder and just like put it like this in your backpack and it locks mm -hmm. into place. Yeah. That'll protect the glass if you get a mm -hmm. glass one, right. but um, yeah, just like I throw it in my backpack like this all the time or, you know, just with a holder in I there. See. Right, right. Um, Fantastic. Yeah, and so and it's... And then the grip has a built-in shutter release cable on it. Yep. Yeah, so nice. this is actually one of the very first ones. This is my camera. Mm -hmm. And since um, the grip has actually gotten a slightly bigger hole for different cable mm -hmm. releases mm -hmm. to fit in there. I put in um, a strap hole so you can hang it off your neck through the strap hole. So some people had run a cord through the uh, shutter uh, hole before, mm -hmm. but I now have both. Mm, nice. um, and then there's another little threaded uh, tripod socket on mm -hmm. the new bottoms. Um, but when I can, if the, if the nose cone is long enough, I put the on-axis tripod mount. So I made these. Um, I made a bunch of like different crazy photo accessories, or pretty standard photo accessories. Everything from like you know these um, film cans, uh, in 120 and 35 millimeter, um, and then I make them in doubles. Yeah. Uh, and you know these screw off. Yeah. And then the doubles have a plate on the back that you can take off and then put this on a backpack strap or a belt loop or whatever. Yeah. I made these triple ones, which are a little crazy for me. This is a 120, this is 35 millimeter. Yeah. Um, and these also have a back plate to mount to something, or you can just remove it or use it, uh -huh. whatever. I make these butter box film cases. You know, yeah, they for take, holding uh, 120 film? Yep, yeah. for 120 film, I have a 35 millimeter somewhere around here. Um, you know, they're not really complicated things, but they are helpful um, to have little simple things that are easy to assemble 
to be printing in the background while I'm doing other prototyping. Um, and then I make these camera grips for oh. all sorts of um, cameras. This one's for Pentax 6.7. Um, it goes out with one of those cameras that needs to be assembled, which is why I haven't shipped it yet. Um, yeah, they've got little extra battery holders oh, yeah. here. Um, it's not connected to anything, but it's just a storage sure. spot. Yeah. Um, and this one I think is for a Canon P, which doesn't have one because yeah. there's no uh, extra, there's no battery on oh, a Canon yeah. P. Okay. Well, what interested me was this. Okay, so um, I got wrangled into the Homemade Camera podcast, um, and I wanted them to do some more interesting things uh, that would excite me. So um, I was really into the idea of the Afghan box camera, uh, which is like a large format camera that you can put your hands in the sleeves in the back of and uh, develop the pictures in camera. And so I made them have like a challenge to build some sort of self-developing camera, which could be a Polaroid, it could be an Afghan box camera, it could be a developing tank with a pinhole in it, or however however you skin the cat, right? right. And um, actually you and I have both been working on this uh, direct positive process, which I would really like to do in it. And so I made this sort of as a proof of concept. So it's just a little pinhole camera with a shutter internally, like a dark slide. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a pinhole on a piece of an Arizona iced tea can here. Mm -hmm. And then the back just pulls out and you put a piece of paper in here. And I like your light trap here, the double walled light trap. Yeah, I use that in a lot of cameras actually in the <coughs> 4x5. Mm -hmm. um, this is a misprint, but you can still see the feature. Mm -hmm. um, when the helix goes into the camera, it's captured by this light trap, so mm -hmm. it can't leak through mm -hmm. here. So you put your piece of toto paper in the back of this box and load it into there in the grooves, right? And then you're good to go. Yep. And then you'd make your exposure with a pinhole and then the magic happens. Right, so the reason why I put the shutter inside the camera, which is sort of weird for a pinhole camera, needlessly complex, is that it's behind the pinhole. And so this pinhole is actually on a thread Right, so you can unscrew it where mm -hmm. I've taped in the, mm -hmm. the pinhole material, soda can, and then screw on. This thing is a light baffle, so like uh, light can't pass through it because the hole is mm -hmm. in a squiggly pattern. Be right thing. Yeah, but air or water can pass through it. Um, and then so you can screw this on. Uh, <laughs> so then you put this thing on, turn it on its back, and then pull the uh, shutter out again. And now you can pour liquid in here. So you have a developing tank. Yeah. Yeah, and so this is not my favorite camera by far, right? It's, it's very limited. It's a pinhole that takes little uh, pictures, but it's, I think, a really fun way to demonstrate something either to somebody else or, mm -hmm. or test some things out. Right. And so I've been able to um, take a pinhole picture and then make a direct positive of it in the camera and just, you know, open the yeah, thing up and have a working picture. And it's it's finicky, but it's... Um, it's really fun. You're actually making one of these for me with a gray uh, pinhole aperture plate, right? Yes, yes, yes. but hopefully um, we will get to make some other camera yes. together yes. Um, if you find a lens you want to yes. build it around. So this this comes to the point that uh, I've been talking to Ethan about combining this pinhole camera developing tank combo with a meniscus glass lens on the lens board and having a way of focusing the camera such as for instance the way the film back moves in and out we're thinking about a way of setting presetting a focus for a, a little glass lens meniscus and then having much faster exposures because this direct positive process that we've been working with the ISO for the black and white paper is what do you think about 0.8 or something yeah yeah yeah, so it's a very slow process. So we need a faster optic. The goal is to be able to make um, portraits. Yeah, I would love to to have like a four by five or larger that has a, is an integral developing tank, mm -hmm. uh, and and with an in integrated internal shutter where you can use it as a tank. Right, yeah. like the love child of this thing, and maybe a graphmatic back. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. So uh, Ethan is going to demonstrate the reversal process that we've been working with. We're going to have a little fun here and 
take some impromptu photos. Do you want to shoot with 4x5 or 6x9 to start with? Well, I don't know. 4x5 is always okay. good for me. Really, really easy. Yeah. So this is... Developed. This is Dectol. Dectol. Um, yep. This is citric acid. Mm -hmm. This is hydrogen peroxide, mm -hmm. which is V40 strength for uh, hair. Yeah, that's, that's the brand. I got it at the uh, beauty supply place. My your usual. And, and it shows. Yeah, I had to go to the usual beauty supply place. And this is sodium sulfide, which is a hypo clearing agent. Okay. This is a rinse. This is my high tech uh, light proofing. So your the display screens on your three D printers will will be a problem with our photo paper, right? So yes. Yeah. So fortieth at five point six. for 50 up at 5.6. Um, sure my shutter is good. Yep. So it should come up darker than a normal negative. So I'm going to put it in the acid. Okay, this is the first bleaching. Oh, that's almost completely clear. Yeah. Um, do one more round? Yeah, so usually in the dark I would do one more round because the, there's stuff you can't see under the safe light. Right. Um, but this is like totally clear. If you can't see it, it's not there. Yeah. That being said, um, I'm going to be religiously superstitious about this. Um, and I think it's like ultimately this is for naught, but. <laughs> yeah. Let's save us we'll some time. Yeah. In the long run. Toss it in there. Oops. Let's see what we get. Mm. Very a little dark. Oh yeah. It is a little too dark. However, I'm off by maybe another stop or yeah. Yeah. Well, so we have a batch of what, five uh, prints that we shot outside, and we're kind of batch developing them. We do multiple rounds in the per, uh, citric acid and peroxide, so this guy is nice and bubbly. Okay, so we're developing our batch, the second development, and we are rinsing now. It was a fun little project. I think I like uh, I like that one of you. That's pretty cool. I really like the dark one. The, the first one is just a little dark, but the shadows are nice, right? And the modeled appearance. It's just a little too dark on the face, but pretty nice. So. Obviously, exposure is pretty critical. Yeah, super critical. <laughs> uh, I think this is, um, it would be really fun if you had a lot of strobe power in a studio, which oh, I do yeah. not. Oh, yeah. Um, but if you yeah. could control it. Well, it's been great, Ethan. I had a lot of fun, and uh, it was fun having you show us around to the studio and everything. And I'm interested in your your camera making business and I, I hope to see that progress and hope, thanks and it's gonna be fun to see what comes with that later on and looking forward to my camera getting finished there <laughs> yeah thanks right, it's thanks. been great thanks you for bet. coming you betcha you take it easy <laughs> thanks you too. well guys until next time stay creative and have yourselves a great day